Hey folks, Liari here. Today we're reacting to The Darkest Pokemon Game You've Never Played by Jaden Animations. I'm excited. It's been a while since the last Jaden Animations video I watched, and I actually played Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, so let's see how this is, how her experience was. Let's go. I played a lot of Pokemon in my days. Yes, me too. And by that, I mean I've played the same Pokemon game with various different skins. But I'm here today to showcase one of, if not the most unique ideas for a Pokemon game Nintendo has published for our tiny little hearts. And that game is called Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. XD. A bit XD. unfortunate, but it came out in 2005, so they get a pass. Why am I talking about it? I think it's an underground game not enough people know about. It does something different, kind of mm. shakes up the formula. It's constantly overshadowed by its predecessor, Pokemon Coliseum. And yeah, okay, I played it as a kid. I'm very biased. Is that what you wanted? If you've not heard of it or played it, you're... Shiggly in for a treat today, the game opens up to a cargo boat, the SS Libra, out at sea where we find the captain and Dyke Steers standing at the helm. All is calm and serene when suddenly they get swatted. And it's not no ordinary SWAT today, folks. No, sir. This is a Lugia SWAT. They run out to see what's going on, and the captain looks up and makes this face as if he wants to kiss Lugia passionately on the lips. But hmm. Lugia's not here for kisses. He's here for the opposite of kisses which is crime. He hyper beams the cargo ship and then steals it. You heard me right. Oh Just blasts the thing point blank and takes it away. Lugia's ship now. The presumably King. only two people on the entire boat fall into the water and are left to just drown in the ocean, I guess. Well, that was a bit raw. What are we, a minute in and two people are dead? Gen 10 could never. Hard cut to me because that's more important. You play as this boy kid named Michael, but actually his name is Jaden now because that's me. The game throws you into the middle of this intense looking fight between a Salamence and Metagross, both level 50. I don't know where I am, what the stakes are, who I am, but this battle seems really important and tough, so I'm gonna give it my all and immediately Oko it. Oh. I did it! Screen goes black. I open yeah. my eyes, everything's blurry. Wake, Wake up, Jaden, you've been in a coma for 15 years. years. Turns out I live in a friendly laboratory run by this Professor Crane and his lab guys. I get up and the guy running the battle simulation tells me how good of a battler I've become. Oh, thanks, man. Then he immediately negs me by telling me it's about time I go out and get myself more Pokemon besides my one lame Eevee. Mm. Backhanded compliment at a child, but... I'll take it, I think. I go into Crane's office where him and my mom are talking, and he says he heard from the battle coach that my battling skills have improved dramatically, and how proud he is of me. To which my own mom tells him to stop giving me compliments and praise because I'm gonna end up spoiled rotten. I don't know oh what kind God. of a response that is to a child receiving praise. Either I'm already a cocky little bastard, or I'm being currently emotionally neglected by everyone in this building. It's Whatever the it is, I don't think it's healthy for my mental development. To make this mother look even worse, we realize her only other child, Jovi, is missing and no one is looking for her. The world is only filled with overpowered wild rabbit animals and crazy people. No, I'm sure it's fine you haven't started looking for her. Keep doing what you're doing. I get a lead saying she really likes hanging out with family friend mad scientist Dr. Kaminko, so I head over to his house and I'm about to knock on his creepy door when this tiny little blind man, Chobin, the doctor's assistant, walks up and is like, BURGLAR! and challenges me to a battle to which I win because he only has a level 5 sun kern. Jovi comes out and is like, oh hi big brother, it's Jovi. Did you get lost big brother? Silly big brother, Jovi will guide you back home. Nice. All right, I see why no one was looking for her now. We return home to the lab yeah. and they present me with a snag machine, a machine that allows the user to catch shadow Pokemon, which are Pokemon that have been so abused that they turn evil. Now, they're saying they haven't seen or heard of any shadow Pokemon that exist anymore because they've all been purified years ago, but mm. who knows when they could start popping up again. Better be safe than sorry. Bam, some guys from a secret organization called Cypher bust into the lab, beat everyone up, steal Professor Crane, show off their shadow Shadow Pokemon and run off to their secret base to never be seen again. Well, I'll be. The lab is in shambles, not knowing what to do, but then decides they're gonna complete their purification chamber in his honor because Shadow Pokemon are back and they want to do something about it. They send me off to this seaside town Gadion port to retrieve a machine part they need, and Joby pesters our mom to come with because Joby doesn't think I can handle going out on my own, and Joby needs to hold my hand and guide her big brother the whole way. Okay, not only does this little snot talk in the third person for no reason, maybe our mom didn't care enough to 
to get us any education. Perhaps she was worried the teacher would give us a compliment, heaven forbid. But she's also the most annoying character I've ever witnessed in any media, and I've watched an episode of My Hero Academia with a grape kid in it. We go to Gadion Port, and not two seconds pass until Joby pisses <laughs> off this random guy, Zook, who happens to be the buffest man in the world. He's about to punt her, and I'm about to do nothing about it, when this old man and his color-coded henchmen step in and obliterate his shadow Zangoose. Hmm. Old man, I was about to be free of everything that is bad in my life, and you took that away from me. We get the part, head back, and mom tells me about this spot in Agate Village called the Relic Stone where you can naturally purify Pokemon. I don't know why you're making your own purifying chamber then when there's a rock that already does that. I go to Agate, and this very enthusiastic man with a Pikachu shows me the stone, and I'm like, cool. To which he's like, by the way, my friend Vander might know where Cypher took Crane. Oh. Okay. I go talk to Vander and he points to this random spot in the desert on my map and is like, Oh, they're right here. I saw them. What were you doing out there? That's literally just sand. <laughs> wow, would you look at that? A headquarters. Huh. I start infiltrating the base, battling all the grunts that fall from the ceiling, snagging any shadow Pokemon I find, until I reach Pink Hatsune Miku, who's trying to get information out of Crane about purifying shadow Pokemon. I battle her and win, which means I get to unkidnap him, and while heading out, I find this data ROM on the ground. Huh. This seems very important and like it has a lot of secret information about Cypher on it. Convenient. Brain returns to the lab and everyone's happy and then they send me to Pyrite Town to find Ned, a guy that should be able to crack the ROM and access all the information on it. So I head there and he's like, yeah, we can crack this, smile. While he's hacking it, I go out and play around in a random cave and run into Mirror B. This guy doesn't do much in this game, honestly, but I just want to make sure you know he exists and listen to his music. Oh my god. It's a boss. I go check on Ned again, and Cypher's bust in, beat everyone up, and kidnapped another person. Have you guys min-maxed how to kidnap people or something? You're two for two at this point, and are scarily efficient at it. They tried a hostage situation the data ROM back, and even though I beat up this big man and take all his shadow Pokemon, Net still wusses out and gives the ROM back. He thought he was being two steps ahead because he saved all the information on his server already, but Cypher just logs on and deletes everything anyway. Net says the only thing he remembers from the ROM was that Cypher was behind the disappearance of the SS Libra, and they're about to attack this city nearby called Fennec, and someone needs to go warn them. Yeah. I guess I'm just Mr. Scooter across the desert and save everyone today, aren't I? I head to Fennec to warn the mayor about the attack and- In this game, I remember the main character is the only one who can do anything. Games with that, like, syndrome are very, um, unique to think about. I love this as a kid though. As soon as I arrive, this lady hits me with a confetti cannon, congratulates me on being the millionth visitor to the city, and shoos me away to celebrate at Real Gam Tower. I try to get around her because this is important, but she's determined to gatekeep me no matter what I do. So I just go there and realize she literally sent a child to illegally gamble his life away. Wow! No one in this region likes children, do they? Oh, come After not on. being able to figure out how to play bingo, I head back, sneak into the mayor's house, distract his house sitter with music, and find out the mayor was trying to write a note to Justy, the city's gym leader, warning him about the cypher attack. I don't know why the mayor was trying to ask this random gym guy to help, but he was kidnapped halfway through writing it, so I guess it doesn't matter. Cypher realizes I now know what's up, and everyone in town reveals themselves to be disguised cypher grunts. Oh my god, they kidnapped the entire town. I don't care what kind of organization you're from, if you can successfully kidnap a village, you've earned my respect. Yeah. I beat up Cypher, rescue their shadow Pokemon, and free Agreed. literally everyone in the town who is locked in the city basement. <laughs> Justy says he saw something suspicious going on in the desert and points to another random sand spot on my map I should go investigate. Honestly, how are all these people just stumbling onto these shenanigans in the middle of the desert? And why are they able to give the latitude longitude of these locations after finding them? This has got to be like tens of miles out from any sort of civilization. This is where people run out of gas in their car and then shrivel up and die before anyone can find them. Why were you here? Wow. Yep. That's the cargo ship. 
How did you find this? All right, what is so enthralling about this desert that crime and vigilante justice is constantly going on in every square inch of this place? Cypher is running around on the ship, and after I take their shadow Pokemon and chase them out, this group of strangers calling themselves Team Snagum walks up and <coughs> rupees me. I wake up, realize they stole my snag machine. This random old man who just started living in the boat said he saw them head off in that direction and points to the middle of nowhere on my map again. You people are beyond me. I show up and wow, another headquarters for crime. I make my way to their head honcho, Gonzap, who's trying to put on my snag machine, but he's too big and muscular and adult. And since I am a child, it does not fit on his giant muscle arm. He pretty much gives up, asks if I want to join Team Snagum. I say yes, but he fights me anyway. And after I beat him, he's like, actually, you can have your arm thing back. We're not enemies. Awesome. So why am I here? You drugged me, stole my stuff, and then just called friendship and gave it back. I find Cypher's shadow Pokemon Sus. factory and walk up to the actual biggest men I've ever seen in the world. How naive I was to think Zook was big. Foolish me. Anyway, they're about to beat me TF up when Gonzap shows up, expresses his devotion to our newly blossoming friendship, and rupees them for me. Thanks, man. You're really consistent at that. I go inside and climb to the roof where their power generator is. There's a tiny little piece of paper there that says, Use system lever to adjust voltage. Do not raise voltage too high. Crank! A guy comes out and starts yelling at me with his Pokemon when the tiny old man who accidentally ruined my life in Gadionport comes on screen and is like, I'm evil and creating a Pokemon that's unpurifiable. Come get me. This is my IP address. I need to cross the ocean to get to him because he's basically on evil Hawaii. So I take this Robo Kyogre from Kaminko, speedboat my way there, and you guessed it, fight everyone in the building slash volcano until I get to the big little man. After fighting an entire country's worth of people, I find him, his name's Greeble by the way, and he's like, I'm surprised you made it this far. Ha 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 ha. Well, I'm busy, don't bother me. And blocks me with a giant pane of glass. Honestly, out of all the fictional villains I've seen, this is surprisingly decently reasonable. But I'm not gonna just sit here and stare at him behind the glass like a goldfish at PetSmart. So I just walk around and use the side door, which really sets him off. I mean, dude, either lock the door or don't have it. This is just what doors do. Gravel's like, you blew up our shadow Pokemon factory. You got past my glass. That's it. I'm summoning Shadow Lugia, the first Pokemon to ever be unpurifiable. Come forth and obliterate this small boy. To which I just master ball it. Oh. Really overlooked that one, didn't you, mate? He may not be purifiable, but he's mine now. <laughs> Huge L. Grievel gets so beyond pissed Omega that he Al. decides to open his creepy eyes and fight me himself. And I was surprised to realize not only does he have a team of all shadow Pokemon, but he somehow nabbed Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. Uh -huh. I'll be honest, it was a really, really hard fight because shadow Pokemon are super effective against all non-shadow Pokemon. I don't know how it took me this long to tell you that, but that's how it works. So instead of trying to catch them all like I've been doing this whole time, I really just beat them up and they ran away. So I win! Cypher has officially lost everything and it's all because of me, the little boy. Blue Henchman runs up to Grievel and is like, Sir, I have a plan. Let's blow up the island with the kid on it. Which is like, oh my god. And then Red Henchman is like, <laughs> okay, that's a bit too far, man. Yeah. Dad, let's go home. Yeah, they pulled the I'm your father slash son twist on us, but it has very little effect on me because I do not care about these people. Anyway, they decide to not blow up the island with me on it and stop being evil, I think. I'm like 60% sure. And then happy ending, I just go home. So what do you think? <laughs> For some game. reason, I really liked the game as a kid. I never actually beat it because I didn't know how to get past the gatekeeping woman in Fennec. I did. Glad I figured it out this time. I also wanted One to of the few games how I ever lively beat. the animations are in this game. Sure, some of the Pokemon look god-awful. They gave Houndor human knees that bend forward, but they're all just so expressive and show so much care and personality. It may be pretty sad the current games don't show this much passion, but I guess that's just what makes these games more cherishable. Anyway. The game was fun and weird. I liked it. See ya. Hey, uh, it's been a while. Anyway, this game also is like all double battles, and I thought that was really interesting. I'd like oh, yeah. that to happen again in a new game. 
Um, nothing else really to say. This is such a cute outro like screen. <laughs> that was yeah. No, I really like this video. Big fan. I um XD, but in a world threatening tone. Exactly. I feel like when I played this game as a kid, like it was one of the first um RPG light, I guess, games I ever played. And it really did, like, instill a love of, like, this style of game in me. Like, and, like, I played a bunch of Pokemon when I was a kid. So, like, in general, just, like, and, like, I would read all the dialogue. So, like, yeah, for some reason, I'm just really into games where I get to just walk around and talk to people. Even if all the conversations don't matter. <laughs> My mom didn't like Pokemon and never got me any of the games. But I managed to get a hold of Pokemon XD because my dad didn't realize he bought the GameCube that came bundled with the game for us for Christmas. He also didn't care that much. So while this was a niche Pokemon game for many, this was actually my first Pokemon game, so it holds a special place of nostalgia for me. For those wondering why Jovi speaks in the third person, it's a Japanese thing. Referring to yourself in the third person is considered a cute and or childish way of referring to yourself. It happens with other games as well, such as Hyperdimension Neptunia, like Paimon and Genshin Impact. So true. I missed this one as a kid, but I absolutely love Pokemon Coliseum. I never played Coliseum. I only played Gales of Darkness and the other game that came out, like, after it. Here, one second. I want to look this up. There was, there's another game that came after. Why is my right click not working? Okay. Yes, my right click's not working. One second. Let me get on my other monitor. Okay. Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. So. All right. One moment, please. Almost done. And there. So this was a video game, right? 2005 release. I'm pretty sure I got this on release, I remember. But um, there was a sequel to it called... Wait. Oh, I'm... I guess I'm wrong. Oh, wait. Pokemon Coliseum is the... I was thinking of Pokemon Stadium. I played Coliseum, too. <laughs> Why is my internet not working? Okay, there. I thank God. I was worried. Yeah, okay, so I played Pokemon Coliseum. Oh my God, how did I... Whoops. I thought... Po and then I also played a little bit of Battle Revolution, but, like, these games were so different. But yeah, this game, I, I'm pretty sure I never beat Coliseum, but I played it a bit, and I beat Gale of Darkness, which I was always very proud of. Um... To this day, it is still one of my favorite Pokemon games. I'm happy to see it in an animation video for it. It really makes me want to go through the game again to relive my childhood memories with it. I think, like, playing games that came out when you were a kid and you have strong memories of is a really cool way of, like, revisiting your childhood. At least for me, like, I also remember the memories associated with that game. Like, what happened in real life, like, in real life to me around that time. So it was, like, really interesting, um... Because I recently replayed, like, Kingdom Hearts 1 and stuff. And so getting those memories flooding back were really interesting. And recently is, like, two years ago now, but still. Or a year and a half. God, I have so many fond memories of this game as a kid. I also never beat it after getting to the Big Bad Island due to a corrupted disc. I've been trying to see about getting a copy for years, but they're also expensive, lol. This recap brought so much nostalgia. I think, like, this was one of the first games, and Pokemon in general was a series like this for me, where I got really into, like, looking up walkthroughs and that tell you how to do stuff, because they didn't really give you much guidance in the game. And, yeah, it was really cool. I love how Jaden just gets increasingly annoyed with every NPC in the game. Dragon, uh, Pokemon, <laughs> Pokemon NPCs are always the silliest. Alright, the fact that the bad guys, after losing, just decided to go home, like all this evil stuff was just a weird family bonding activity for them, made me laugh so hard. 
No one can die. Except for the two people at the front at the beginning of the video. Of course. Alright. Thank you for watching, folks. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye. Hey folks, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like the video, subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, and have a great rest of your day. Bye.